Jackie Cash and Lori Kilmartin. I'm in Texas, where the internet is unstable, Lori. Uh, I don't know if it is. Much like a... the government. <laughs> the entire <laughs> community of Texas is unstable. Uh, here we are, days before Thanksgiving. I went to the Houston. I went to Lyndon Johnson. I went to the Johnson Space Center. To the oh, museum. interesting. Mm-hmm. And it was, yeah, except for it wasn't as interesting because the tram was full. It was raining so hard that I didn't get to actually see a space shuttle or a rocket. Uh, I did mm. get to see all the stuff uh, in inside the museum, and I got to spend quite a lot of money at the gift shop. And then I got to also get kind of gouged a little bit with the Uber. So it was a bit of a cash grab uh, that day. But I did enjoy what I saw of space. Oh, my God. I I don't even, even the phrase cash grab is like this. There's one thing I'm furious about that we can't talk about. And there's a separate thing that um, I'm sure it was an oversight because there was a contract that everyone signed. But mm-hmm, I was mm-hmm. underpaid by about a third <laughs> nope. last night. I was like, "What?" And it, and, it, okay. and it will be, and it will be resolved, it will be or it fixed. was, it, it will, will be fixed. it will be resolved. The person who wrote the check wrote it, you know, away wasn't from at the show. Yep. Yes, wrote it from someplace else, and so they forgot some a, stuff. I got a random check from Michigan from Dr. Grins. Uh, two days ago, right, right before I showed up, and I was like, "What is this?" And then, so I texted, I emailed with a picture uh, to the agent, and the agent was like, "Oh, that's your bonus. Uh, they forgot to give it to you." And I was like, "Oh well, knowing your heart, nice. that uh, they could have got away with it, but they didn't." And, oh, uh, shh, quiet, Jackie. You gotta yeah, be. I know you know, it. Those, they don't, they don't those need head- to know it. <laughs> those headliners would come out with those counters and they would just stand. You ever yes. see a headliner at like yes. in the 90s stand and count the audience? You're like, what are you doing? There's 12 people here, uh, Debbie. <laughs> right. They want to make sure they're like, who was comped? And because, you know, the, the clubs would always imply that, that they, they had papered the room and that's why it was full. And so they didn't want to mm-hmm. pay you for paper. And you're like, so they would count well i mean there's no way to tell if you're counting but uh, but yeah i mean Mm -hmm. there just there's some people that you know they did door deals so they had they had a counter out there making sure they weren't getting stiffed i mean i definitely i definitely understand why they needed it It was always just funny to me to see somebody not enjoying (laughs) the show just like looking at each table right and someone who had bought one of those clicker things which is always hilarious yeah Yeah. yeah so well, I'm in, I'm in went, Houston. I'm at a comedy festival. So, um, what's the festival? You're all over festivals this year. This year, it's all festivals all the time. It's called the Come and Take It Festival, mm-hmm. which is essentially an ancient Sparta take it from my cold dead hand line that Texas has co opted. And so they've, they've called it the Come and Take It Festival. And it's not. Like it's, it doesn't seem to be politically motivated. I think it's just because it's Houston mm-hmm. um, that they're calling it that. And, um, but it's all, all, everything was in one building, the secret group, right? They had um, three rooms in one building and then they rented a warehouse for the bigger shows mm-hmm. right next to them. And so it was, incredibly convenient um i did because it rained almost every day and it's been very dark and i don't know where i'm where i'm going in houston i've taken a lift to the show it's about a mile um oh did you see my tweet about my lift driver Mm -mm. i had the worst lift driver like i said it's the mile from here to the venue Mm -hmm. i don't know how he got in as much disgustingness as he did, but there was oh. no, like he waited till we were rolling to tell me that he wasn't vaccinated and didn't believe in it and was a bit of a conspiracy theorist. And then why did he, and, why did he even bring it up? Were you wearing a mask? I was, I was wearing a mask and I think I coughed. 
And I okay. said, I, I'm not <laughs> sick. I'm just, um, I just had oh, to call. Oh, you were so trying sorry. to reassure him? Yeah. And so he was like, I'm not vaccinated. I'm, and then he was, and then he said that he had, we had driven, we were driving back from the club to the hotel and the club, the secret club, the, the secret uh, comedy headquarter thing turns into like one of their rooms turns into a dance. It was K-pop night and it was a dance rave. And I was like, oh Christ, get me away from here. And so, wow. um, but I get in the car and he was like, yeah, you know, I'm getting married. And he was probably in his middle 60s. And he said, I'm getting married. Very young Filipina girl. And uh, I wouldn't want to bring her here. She said someone would steal her. And I was oh like, oh, my ah. God. And then he told oh me that God. she had really big boobs. This is within nine blocks. I was like, he, I, I hope I first of all, was... I'm pulling for her. I hope he dies as soon as they get married and she gets all of his. <laughs> uber money whatever and <laughs> i don't know is eligible luck, for lady. all of his like social security oh yeah and, get it uh, get it <laughs> and uh i was like and then he said something else and i was like dude i'm just trying to get to the hotel here and uh <laughs> and he finally got me to the hotel and so i did a poll on twitter twitter's pretty pointless right now <laughs> except for that oh my god um like there's no one to report tweets to and it's not right. even worth the tiniest of efforts. So, yeah. but I did do a poll saying, should I give him a low rating or not tip? <laughs> because I like I think to I do saw one the poll. The other. Yeah. yeah. And, and I also texted uh, Rory Scoble and Dan St. Uh, uh, Van Kirk, Daniel Van Kirk, uh, because I had, I'd come from doing their podcast in, in a mm -hmm. set. And I was like, what, what do you guys think? And they both simultaneously, I got text back from that said, both. And then I did the poll and everyone <laughs> was like, both. <laughs> and so for the first time I gave a terrible uh, star review and no tip. What was your review? I wrote down exactly what the guy said. <laughs> Cause they, cause I gave him one star and there was a, there was a, a thing where you could write down what happened. And so I wrote down what happened <laughs> and cool. I was like, uh, I don't know if, I don't know if this is, it just felt super weird. So I didn't want to tip him or give him a good review. Of course. No, you, no, you don't. No. Uh, although you, did, you not tipping him takes money away from his new bride, but you know what? He probably wouldn't <laughs> give it to her anyway. Right. I'm sure he's getting her a job right now. Yes. And uh, um, I went to, let's see, I had good Uber drivers, Lyft drivers this weekend. I went to Danvers. First of all, okay. So this whole time I've been plugging this gig as in it's in Boston because I thought right. it was in Boston. Yeah. It's so Outside I don't, of Boston? I, I don't look up anything. I'm like, <laughs> Oops. I get in, there's an address. I don't know. I think it's a neighborhood in Boston called yeah. Beverly. It's not. It's 45 fucking minutes away. It's practically Ooh. in Canada. Okay. <laughs> and it's a, it's, I'm stranded at a hotel where they're like, I didn't bring anything. Cause I'm like, I need me in Boston. I'm just going to walk outside and there'll be restaurants everywhere. I was next to a Home Depot. Oh no. That's it. Food wise. So, um, so it, it was so it, weird. It was very much like, um, I don't know if this is bad for the video, but like your, most of your faces cut yeah, off. I, but we don't, I, I, we don't have to down. care. I'm not you know what? Care. Sorry, we're not beauty queens. We're not, <laughs> this isn't why you're here. So, no. There's nothing, there's nothing to do. And that's okay. It was a very short gig and stuff. I just would have brought like food and snacks because I just assumed there'd be Boston just waiting for me. Um, right. And, uh, uh, but the, the venue's fun. It's a small venue and, um, they canceled one of the shows, but the two shows we did have were very full. Good. And, um, I went to this morning, I treated myself to a brunch at this place called the friendly toast. Mm -hmm. And I start. I've also started squirting something up my nose i i am very conscious of the fact that i might be the inverse of a someone taking ivermectin but um <laughs> it's called enovid and it's it says it kills 99 percent of all germs and a lot of people on the covid paranoid um 
Twitter that I follow, they're like, you know, you just squirt a few things up your nose and, you know, that's a little extra layer of protection. That's what they believe. I'm like, I'll fucking try it. I don't care. So I've been squirting yeah, that yeah. up every six hours, every time I'm unmasked or exposed and um, bring my little purifier, but I walk into to the friendly toast. Now you took an Uber, so I'm stuck there. There's nothing else right. going on. Right. And it is packed. And a lot right. of kids, and I'm like, oh, it's a fucking family brunch. Oh God, it's awful. And they're all there's coughing, yeah. there's RSV and flu everywhere. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, I just I, I would take a bite and put my mask back on and chew it and hold my mask while I'm chewing it. And stuff. And, um, <laughs> yeah. So some dumb fuck on the next table over starts going gonna gonna sheep gonna what? sheep. What does that mean? It means he's talking to someone named Gunner in a Boston accent. Okay. And he's saying sheep <laughs> because I'm the only one there with a mask on, right? Because Ouch. I didn't, uh. This guy, Gunner, never responded and he gave up. <laughs> Thank so God. Funny. Yeah. Uh. Um, so, I wow. know, can you hear that? Uh, there's a lot going on no? outside on the streets. Okay, good. Um, I can't, yeah. I, and then I I, my friend Ross. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Okay. So my friend Ross Bennett, who's a comic. Do you know Ross? Mm -hmm. He used to no. go by Eddie Strange for a while. And um, he's great. That he's such familiar. a funny guy. Okay. Yeah. And uh, so he is engaged to a comic um, and uh, named Gwen. And uh, so they came to my Saturday show. And then we all went out to dinner. And I did the same thing where I was like eating and then putting the mask back on and, you know, pointing the air purifier at me. I do probably look insane to a lot of people, but I just, you know. Uh, yeah, it turns out you also, it. you look alive. So <laughs> you're also yeah. continue to be. to see them. That is great. That and is. He, um, he had a story. I, I can't, I'll tell you who it's about, but I can't say because this person's dead. <laughs> oh, well, then they're not going to get mad at us. No, but they're beloved. Okay. It's right. about this guy and mm. and another okay. comic. Um, he This guy was accused of stealing. Now, not just jokes, but characters. This other comic did characters. But, and um, was that back in the day? Because I've heard back that about in the this day. guy. Yeah, back okay. in the day. Okay. So this guy, this guy, um, what he was good at he wasn't he wasn't good at impressions he's good at what a lot of comics are doing which is copying somebody else's impression of somebody right like a lot oh, of i'm lot really of people, good at that i'm yeah, actually like, really good at that <laughs> you let you you let like dana carvey figure out the actual beats of an impression then then everyone starts doing dana carvey's impression i i forget who did the first christopher walken but then everyone started copying that cr person doing christopher walken right mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so this this comic and this is the comedy store in the you know, the seventies did a lot of individual, like unique characters. And yeah. this now I'm sure people can figure out what I'm talking about dead comic, uh, lifted them. Mm -hmm. And I guess the other comic like, <laughs> like pushed him against a wall and beat him, beat him up or something. But, okay. but like Ross, cause Ross was around during all that. I swear to God, he's a fucking comedy encyclopedia. His first wife, he and his first wife were married by uh, Sam Kinison, who was a reverend. Like, yeah, he was. He's got some incredible stories. So anyway. Do you know this uh, comic? I just typed it no. in. No. No. Okay. I don't. Supposedly New York. Okay. And, um, and goes and, and claims to be a comic. Um, okay. And it's weird. I mean, granted, you don't know. Oh, okay. Uh, you don't know um, all the New York comics in the whole wide world, but right. I wish I could remember. And I did it on purpose too. Um, a comic because there's so many. You know what? This this particular comedy festival is full of respectable, like the guys that I like. You know? Yeah. Like they're mm -hmm. like that 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 early two thousands or mid two thousand. Uh, sort of after Kinane and Bronger, kind of, but uh, like, like uh, Sean Patton and mm -hmm. Rory Scovel and Shane mm -hmm. Torres, who's mm -hmm. even newer than those guys, um, mm -hmm. and they're all really good comics. Mm 
Mm-hmm. Yep. And they're and they're decent men and they're mm-hmm. good guys. And it's nice. It was nice to hang out with them, you know? Yeah. 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 Because yeah. I was like, mm-hmm. oh, good. And then there was just it had to be like there had there had to be like 15 women comics and much much of most of them were texas comics but Mm -hmm. um they were all super funny and interesting and the different rooms had a lot of there was a lot of diversity as far as like they had um they, they had a lot of sort of they had queer comics but they also had like trans comics and they had a a night of um lgbtq you know interesting you know, and everybody had this a different take, right? It's yeah, always right. so interesting. I right now I did like two sets, and then I did two podcasts. And one of my sets was a was the long set. It was probably forty minutes, and I was so because I'm doing I'm clipping out so much of uh, the staycation special because they're not playing it anywhere. I might as well. You know, and I don't want to do the material anymore. But as I clip it out, I'm like, well, I kind of need to do that material because I haven't written enough new material. And it's truly irritating to me that that I don't seem to have. I don't like I was listening because while clipping out, you know, you'll see old bits that Mm -hmm. are tight, that are tight. They're done. They were smart. They were funny. I'm so proud of them. And then I'm like, mm-hmm. oh, I haven't written anything like that le- recently, you know? Yeah. But, right, but right, right. all that stuff takes so much time that I just have yeah. to be patient with myself and with the material and with all the things. I have to, I don't, patience right Do, now. You're, is yeah. It's hard to compare a chunk that took eight years to tighten mm-hmm. with a chunk that's a year old, right? Because mm-hmm. mm-hmm. I, I was doing that too. I was like, let me just front load my set with old stuff so I can get out of the way and then do the stuff that I'm working on. Um, and, you know, and uh, so the old stuff was killing because it's fucking tight. There's not an extra word. <laughs> right. And the new stuff is looser. It has good punchlines and stuff, but like, you know, there's a, there's long setups and stuff that mm-hmm. I haven't, you know, populated with jokes yet. And so long setups, that's noticed- my middle name. Jesus. <laughs> I was noticing, you know, just like a drop off in energy because I would do like four or five of these newer things in a row. And so so then last night's show, I just moved a few around and then just changed the order a little bit and kind of interspersed some older with new so that that it was like, it'd be like super, super tight five minutes and then a looser six minutes and then a super tight, you know, three and a looser seven or something. So that seems to work pretty well. That's much but smart. I, you know what? Yeah. I so I posted my nine eleven joke. I clipped mm-hmm. it out from a flapper set. Yeah, I didn't even post all the tags because it gets right. really, <laughs> it's really dark. <laughs> and um, uh, and uh, so I just posted the general idea, and then, and then my friend Ross, who went to the show, he he like he he watched that clip and he loved the joke, and he goes, "I just I was waiting for you to do that joke." I'm like, wait, you know it, you saw it, and now you want to hear it. Mm-hmm. So, so in your head, you're thinking, oh, everyone's seen this, but people might, and this is, it's almost more like music than I thought comedy would be that people would want to hear it live. Yep. You know, I had a um, woman cheering during that because I uh, clipped out was that May spit. And that I never mm-hmm. thought that would go on anything. And now I'm like, well, it's probably going to go on an album now just because it has 5 million views and it's clearly very wow. popular. And once it's wow. tight, once it's real, because that was one of the first times I did it. The the one that was wow. clipped out wearing a weird sweater. Anyway, so uh, in the clip. But so mm-hmm. there was a woman in the audience last night who I started doing the doing it. And she was like, TikTok. And I'm like, wow. Oh, so you've oh heard this. Do you want me to do it? And she was like, tell it. And I was <laughs> like, all God. right. It goes against everything we were raised to believe. <laughs> right? <laughs> it felt it felt weird. And um, but it and it was un it was un it it sort it threw my it threw my gate off, right? It threw my timing off mm-hmm. a little bit. Mm-hmm. There's been a lot of like 
you know, I've spent, because it's a festival and there's a lot of people, they had nothing in the coolers but beers. There was only beers, no water. Oh, not even no, water? Oh, that's not crazy. Even, I had to go to the bar to get waters and sodas. And uh, <laughs> so, uh, and and the green room, it was just, it was a party. It was uh, It was such a party that I have spent a fair amount of time alone. And I really liked this. This was lovely. But um, but there was so, so much that I had to Jackie. just go. Wow. Yeah. Well, you know me, I party all the time. So I don't know why I'm not at that level. Right. Well, and it's so funny because I had to tell a story which may or may not be true, which is yeah. when I did party, I was so drunk and wasted and high and everything by 11 or 12 I was done anyway so I never made it to the 3 30 4 a.m business that people do and now that I don't uh party uh I am back at the hotel by 11 30 12 mm -hmm. <laughs> reading my book which I'm enjoying listen I think every comedy festival needs a comic that doesn't party you just need to have one adult there to <laughs> make sure one of the shows right. happens on time <laughs> right I and but I had some really nice like there was a lot of conversation like a, a lot of the I think was it it might have been Daniel Van Kirk and Rory that we were talking about how everybody's posting those those crowd work uh clips and how it's interfering with people who want to tell jokes uh I think it was Rory was saying that there were some people in the audience that they had their phones out the whole time and they were attentive, but they didn't, they, they didn't know who he was. They had just Rory come, Scoble? they sat, yeah, they just came, they sat in the second Jesus. row, uh, in their, in their cargo shorts and polo shirts, attentively watching the whole show, waiting to be talked to. Oh no! Oh no! Are you serious? <laughs> oh no! <laughs> oh, and it's God. because oh, there's no. like, you know, like Pete, Pete, Peter Lee, Pete Lee, uh, posts right. all those clips of him saying, "So what do you do for a living?" And then him saying something interesting back, and then turning whatever they do for a living or whatever they said into something that was so, kind so of riffy. It's training the audience to come with punchlines. And yeah. smart little comments. Or or smart comments or just a desire for it to be more inter like a circus, like more interactive. And I don't I genuinely don't want any part of that. It's uh I think we're I we all it, know but... that there should be none of that. <laughs> um, um interesting. Yeah, it's weird. I was when I was at on Thursday night when I was in New York, I did, um, which is where I am right now, I did like four sets, two at Greenwich Village and then two at the Broadway. Those are both Al Martin's rooms. Right. And um, one of the guys at Greenwich Village um, was just like a nice young comic. And then Eric, who runs it, was like, yeah, he's got 7 million followers on TikTok. I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> it's, uh, I don't know. It's just bananas. Um it, I mean, yeah. I will start posting more clips, obviously, that helps a lot. And, uh, but, you know, yeah, I, I definitely think that people getting 7 million are, you know, young, attractive, um, <laughs> you know, uh, comics and not necessarily older joke writers. You know what I mean? I don't know. I, we'll see. I don't, I, I, who knows? I can't figure who out knows? the algorithm. I posted... I like the one that has 5 million hits and then there's the one that has 100,000 hits. Oh, by the way, Laura House's uh, fiance, Brian, uh, yes. w listens to this show. Hi, Brian. Hey. Uh, Bri Bri so Brian creepy, is, Jackie. So he's creepy. Such, he's a, he's a great him, trumpet player. Love he's, him. Let him live in peace. Don't terrorize him on the podcast. <laughs> well, Laura House called me because last week I said that uh, I was. we were talking about TikTok again. And uh, Laura was like, Brian says that you mentioned something on the podcast about knowing how to do TikTok. Can you explain how to do TikTok? Mm -hmm. And uh, she said, I'm so sorry. I don't listen to the show. And I was like, I don't, I don't, <laughs> I don't listen to anything. <laughs> you were on the show. You're fine. And um, yeah. so I, and I explained to her that Tiff Stevenson 
explained to me how to do TikTok six months ago, eight months ago. Mm -hmm. And that's how I know. And so I told her what Tip told me to do. Um, but I, I did have a, a different story I was going to tell you. So I did a 10 minute set night before last, just to pick up, right? Uh, mm -hmm. At the festival. And there was a guy who was blind who came during like two minutes into my set. He, he walked up, stick, stick, tap, 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 sat in the front row, enjoyed my set. Last night, the longer set, uh, he was already sitting in the front row looking at his iPhone. Mm -hmm. hmm. <laughs> Six minutes into my set, he got up. Tap, 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 stick, walked his way out. So, distracto, first of all. I mean, because mm -hmm. when, when yeah. he came and sat down, I was like, well, I don't know how to keep doing jokes while this tap, tap, tapping happens. And I'm rooting for you, sir. Because he had like a right. bear in his hand and he was trying to find the chair and stuff. And then as he was leaving <laughs> last night, I was like, it's not that I'm not still rooting for you, but you were just looking at your iPhone. So I know that you're, I know that you're legally blind, <laughs> but I am slightly offended that you're not going to stay for the rest of this set. You and should be. <laughs> I had the worst. Okay. It was, there were Jackie, parts of it that were epically funny. Yes. Take everything personally. <laughs> <laughs> that's what no. I do. That's well, what, that's how that I felt down. when I got my check last Make night. I took it very personally yes take everything very personally noted uh and in the other... situation we can't talk about it but uh, go ahead go ahead go right. continue with the story so oh i today i did doug loves movies with doug benson and joe de rosa mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. daniel van kirk and it turns out i have never seen any of the movies that they were I talking never, about. And I, I never have seen the movies. They, I they am always about. terrible at that show. Me too. And he, he keeps Why having me on? back. Yes. And, but this one, it literally, it was very, very funny because he had a through line on the questions and a trap was built into it that none of us fell into because uh, it was too smart. And Joe, Rosa, Joe DeRosa and I didn't have a chance, but uh, uh, Daniel, he had a chance. Joey Roses. And uh, yeah, Joey Roses. I wanted to talk to him. Joey Roses, Joe DeRosa has a sandwich shop. And he has a sandwich shop, yes. On the, on the Lower East Side. Is it uh, somehow tied to the stand, but I don't know exactly how. Oh, okay. But Jackie, good for him. Good for everybody. For sure. Make your money. Well, and and when Doug was Doug Benson was talking about how he he knew things about sandwiches, I wanted to bring up the best sandwich I've ever had in my life, which uh in the worst comedy town in the country, uh which is Atlantic City. Um, oh, they yeah. do they're doing amazing wow. work with cold cuts, amazing, like epic, and mm -hmm. uh and I wanted to talk to Joe DeRosa about it. But I thought, then I found out he had a sandwich shop, so he probably doesn't want to hear about the best sandwich I had that wasn't his place. Oh, right. I mean, yeah, that might aggravate him. I got right. somebody, I, let me tell you something. Tell me. So <laughs> I flew out here. Mm -hmm. I took it. I, I have a suitcase full of books. I have like 20 pounds of books, right? In one right, suitcase. Right. Mm -hmm. My air purifier in the other, and then a few, you know, clothes and stuff like that, right? So I take public, I take uh, the train, I take the subway, and this fucking city isn't always accessible for everybody, right? So mm -hmm. some places I have to drag, you know, 50 pounds, 60 pounds wow. of suitcases. Up and down those cement stairs. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Oh. Right? And then to get to the apartment, and then I have to do the same thing to go back the next day to get on the train to go to, take a train to, to Danvers, to Beverly. Right. Everything. So then so I just, you know, tweet, hey, I'm here. If you're anywhere nearby, please come to the show. You know, trying to fill mm -hmm. the room. Somebody responds, they'd love to, but they're feeling lazy. And I'm like, <laughs> you come to the show so I can punch you in the face because you know what? <laughs> what if what was the gonna... rule? Here's the rule. 
take everything personal. I do. I do. I took it personally. If you aren't going to come to a show, don't, I don't want, I don't need to know. No, but nobody and needs I certainly to know. don't need to know if the reason is you're feeling lazy. You know? Right. Do tell you know me, how, tell me, do you know how Howard yes. I worked to get here. <laughs> I mean, with the, with the heavy lifting and everything with the heavy lifting, flying across country, getting, you know, tr- making sure my son has childcare, uh, you know, making sure his dad making, uh, doing all this extra shit so I can fucking even fly out of the house. Yep. And you can, and you can't drive to a, you show. can't keep it to yourself. Run nearby. Keep it uh, to yourself. <laughs> okay. So one of the clips, uh, I've had uh, uh, somebody helping me do the clips, right? I'm doing a lot of the clips. This other person's doing clips. He picked a clip from Horcrux where I say, and granted it, it's a video and I've never looked at myself in the mirror, so I don't know. But I say that I'm a like a seven in a six in Wisconsin, but I'm an mm-hmm. airport cop in in LA. That's the joke, right? Mm-hmm. And uh, almost got a tiny laugh. Good for me. But uh, so somebody, <laughs> but I, I didn't, I didn't want to post it. I think I've heard because, that because, well, yeah, yeah. And so, but I didn't want to post it because I knew the trolling. Because once you address your own looks in a video, uh, people are going to have an opinion. And so I have just been deleting uh, people's opinions. And, on TikTok? Uh, yeah, it's on TikTok. And so um, some guy was like the longest, most sincere diatribe about, no, I see what she's saying. She's, she's so right, oh but no God. way is she a six oh my in God. Wisconsin. I'd say maybe a four. And I was like, delete, my what friend. What the fuck? <laughs> I was like, it's just a it's just a joke. You don't have to want to be with this. Ideally, Jesus that would be Christ. awkward for me. That would be genuinely awkward if you did. So why don't we just wrap it up? I learned how to make, uh, let's see. Let, let's take a break, actually. Is that cool? Yeah. Well, and then let's do comic of the week. Our comic of the week is uh, Nishi XL, and it, her last name is the letters, her stage last name, X and then L. And uh, she's very funny. I just yeah. worked with her at Flappers. I worked Ooh. with like a whole bunch of women at Flappers on one night. I was like writing down all the names. Um, I, I have so many names. It's so crazy. Kiana Dance, Dancy from last week was there the same night. And uh, yeah, Nishi's uh, super funny. And I guess she just did a, a, a set on peacock they had a show uh okay if you, if you look her up you'll find her on the peacock network um but how uh, are you spelling her first name how was that going and i n i s h i she's y. i think half it's with a no y. it's got a y no it's an i according to the website and the stuff really yeah yeah on- so what's what's her instagram or here i'll pull it up i'll don't worry i'll cut this um okay Okay. Throw her stuff in here, but yeah, well, I had to go search it. And it that link, I, it. I think I link. Oh, is N-I-S-H-Y-X-L it? N I S H Y X L at N I S H Y comedy. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I look forward to meeting her at least three or four times. That'll be great. <laughs> <laughs> uh... um, yeah. I'm so tired. I, today uh, was like a long day, a, a four, a three, I guess three and a half hour. Uh, S- a Sella train trip uh, on the Amtrak, and then again clunking my bags up. Although they were a lot lighter because I sold all my books, but um, still, there you go. Of, Good lots work. Of taking two suitcases up several flights of stairs. That's banana land, as far as I'm concerned. Um, yeah, but this week, yes, some minutia. Just you know, we do have another Please. half hour to kill. Um, yeah. So at the, at the 145th station. The D train, which is on the lowest floor, has a very skinny escalator going all the way up to the top. And then you only have to take two flights of stairs out. So I take the wow. A train from Penn Station to 59th Street or 125th. And then I ha- just get out and go across the road to across the platform to the D train. Because uh, otherwise, if I take the A train to 145th, it puts me up in the middle platform, and now I have to take another set of stairs up. That's just a little trick for anyone in that exactly peculiar predicament. 
<laughs> where there is heavy lifting to be done, it can be avoided if you know where all of the lessened. elevators and the lessened. escalators lessen. Yeah. Yes. Yes. So what do people do in New York if they are handicapped? Or, or it's really fun. I mean, I, I don't necessarily pay attention to that too much because I'm, I, you know, stairs are always good for you. But when I have a ton of suitcases, I was like just looking for the wheelchair uh, yeah. signed so I could take a, uh, an elevator or an escalator. And there's not, there's not enough. There's definitely not enough. I mean, there's not, right. there's not one on 145th. And even Penn Station isn't, you know, getting up from, the, the Amtrak platform to the A, uh, yeah. which is like a common routing for anybody, uh, you still have to do a, a flight and a half of stairs, which if you're in a chair, I yeah. don't know how you do it. Yeah, yeah, that's crazy. That I don't, I mean, yeah. I, I think by law, they're supposed to They're be, supposed to, yes. Yeah, they're supposed to have their act together. Um, yeah, we're both, these are, these are both weird. Like I usually would be home today because today's Sunday. This will go up right. tomorrow. But because yeah. I stayed to do Doug's podcast, I um, I'm just here an extra day, and then this week is Thanksgiving, 2022, and um, my sister's coming on Thursday, uh, for neat. the weekend. Yeah, with the kids and everybody, and um, oh, cool. Yeah, that'll be fun. Um, and so, but it promises to be a busy week. And I only have one more Dork Forest, and I have to record more Dork Forests, but I don't know when. <laughs> so the relentless, the relentlessness of the forest. I don't know how you deal with yeah. it. Dork, 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 dork. I don't know either. And I have a terrible headache, and I oh, do you? Um, yes, and I have for several hours. And I took a shower, and it didn't work. And um, so you take I'm any just drugs? Exhausted. No, I'm going to take some melatonin. Hopefully, fall asleep. Okay. Um, I'm out of my Lumi Lab stuff. So. No to, to Lumi Lab. Pony up. <laughs> <laughs> it's um, uh, yeah. I uh, I, I'm so I just hate the comedy business. I can't tell you. It's it's just so it makes me so angry. So, for reasons yeah. I said and cannot say. And uh, but artistically, I'm like. I feel like I've never been better and oh really I'm, yeah I feel like I'm top of my game and I love the love the stand-up part but this other fucking shit it's just That's... crazy right I on the other I I am you know the thing about stand-up and I'm sure it's in every industry or whatever but there are there are these plateaus and these valleys where you're like nothing feels like it's moving like i'm not either moving creatively or the career part isn't moving or the or the people that i'm working with are driving me and it's it's just an, an uh, it's an exercise in patience you know with all of these different parts of this thing and i sometimes don't want to i just you know like i know i'm hitting my head against the right doors but my head still hurts how about that so, um, cause it's, the, I'm doing the right things. You have to get up. You have to keep trying. I have to keep yeah. writing down two sentence or two word premise ideas. And then I get up on stage and I'm like, nope, <laughs> there's nothing there. And I don't know. And, and it was driving me nuts. Cause I was watching the Terrigen mist bit. I clipped that out from the mm -hmm. two dope Queens and it's such a great bit. It's got all, it's got all the parts, you know, and granted mm -hmm. it was, you know, an 18 month bit because it's tight, but it's got like a personal edge. It's got a regular jokety joke part of it. It's got mm -hmm. um, nerd references. It has all the parts that yeah. make a really great. That make it a know, Jackie Cation sort of, bit. Right. Very specific Jackie Cation bit. Mm -hmm. And, um, yeah, I don't have anything. I don't, I don't. I don't have any new premises, so it's a bit of a drag being me. And then I have a, a scratchy throat. I'm gonna have some water. <sighs> <laughs> hey, there's vending machines in this hotel. I thought of you wow. because you like you a vending machine in a hotel, which is so weird to me. This I like a closet. Yeah, well, as opposed to nothing. No vending. Oh, true machines. that. That's yeah. what I was dealing with, Jackie, on those other two hotels. Nothing. There was no closet and no vending machine? Okay, that is funny. 
Wait, you don't have a closet? Additional closet. Do you have a wardrobe? There's a restaurant that has... Uh, no, no, uh, closet. I'm, uh, I keep calling it that. It's not what I'm talking about. Uh, it's it's the next to the check-in. There's sort of a tiny little cubby hole that has... Oh, yeah, the little kitchen, uh, kitchenette or something. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah, but it's in the ground floor. It's like yeah. a yeah, it's like a tiny store. Yeah. And um this this hotel doesn't have that. They have vending machines. And last night I got back here and I hadn't eaten because the the food situation is because it's downtown Houston. It's fine right by the, the where the club <sighs> is. There's essentially yeah. a handful of opportunities to spend twenty six dollars on a sandwich. And oh my God. uh and so I've done that and that's fine, but, um, but I, I don't leave this room. The great thing this hotel does have is it has one of those espresso machines where you can get a latte anytime. That's kind of exciting. That's good. You know, twice, you know, twice in the morning. Twice but... a day. Yeah. Yeah. And then, well, or at least once in the morning and then once before I go to the club is what I do. The Sinestra didn't have much and like they had, you know, those that tony's pizza it's like a little disc of diabetes and heart disease yeah (laughs) so i had one of those just felt i just kind of felt gross all the time it was just all the food choices were so so bad you know yeah yeah the food choices in in the last couple of weeks have been kind of mediocre which makes me feel sluggish which is weird yeah 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 it's not great it's not great. Oh um, my god! I don't. What I do you got this week? It to an hour. I'm so tired. I know you're I pretty tired. I still have this uh, habit of writing. It's this is from lockdown. Writing my schedule on a whiteboard on the fridge, so I don't yeah. have it when I'm on the road. <laughs> oh, so I don't know what's coming <laughs> up. Right, um, right. I have some spots here and here and there. Um, Thanksgiving, oh, this very- I guess our okay. Thanksgiving is over, you know, like our whole family up until the pandemic, um, we had a big Thanksgiving blowout of, of our family and my cousin, the Kilmartin cousins, and mm-hmm. there's nine of them and then they all got married and then they all had kids and some of them got married. So it just, it would just get bigger and bigger and uh, people started dropping out, you know. People started getting right. super Republican, dropping out. People started just moving, dropping out. And then did you guys do a, it kind of went away. Zoom? Did you do a Zoom one no. over the lockdown? No, no, no. What about the um, only th- thing we d- did Zoom over the lockdown was my mom's funeral. Uh, right. But okay. um, yeah, so Thanksgiving kind of just, it's weird because it was such a tradition with me and it's not with my son, really it's mm-hmm. he might remember more the times we've gone to the laugh factory and um, <laughs> fed the homeless and, people at the laugh factory and he's thankful for that but uh yeah because because the laugh factory does that every thanksgiving right he he yeah he puts on a big spread for whoever wants ciao yeah yeah and then yeah. you hang out and you, yeah, have you it's, volunteered it's, it's there? Kind of fun i've done it a couple times i don't even know oh. if jamie knows who i am or he kind of he always kind of likes like he looks like he's trying to figure out who I am I'm not mm-hmm. sure if he knows me that well which and, and I don't want to trouble him by introducing myself so right I just, oh I just yeah, keep you... serving soup or whatever <laughs> yeah you don't want to get in the in the glare there uh you're fine. <laughs> and uh I did submit my uh avails to Rita and um and I think I'll sub- I'll try to submit my avails to flappers this week but I uh I all oh, yeah. I have are festivals and um podcasts i'm doing howard kramer's podcast this week and um because i ran into him last week and we were we did that uh it's not a bookstore it's a theater in it's like a tiny box theater that has a lot of books in it um in glendale the glendale room yeah Yeah. off of brand yeah and then um i love that there's and there's a movie theater across the street and so i I think I told you this last week that uh, I got free coffee because uh, someone recognized my voice. Oh, <laughs> and Howard Kramer and I, 
Howard Kramer and I both got free coffee because I went over to the movie theater because I was like, a movie theater will sell coffee. So I, I went and the movie theater had a bar. It was a sit down movie theater, right? That had food and, and everything. So I go to the bar and I was like, do you guys have coffee? And she goes, yeah. And I was like, can I get two cups of coffee? And she turns around, she turns back to me and she goes, do you do stand up? And I was like, <laughs> yes, I do. Mm -hmm. And then I tried to offer her money for the coffee and she gave it to me for free. Heck yeah. You know what's funny yeah. is um, I think Nate, uh, Howard and Megan Keister do a podcast about getting stuff for free on Craigslist. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And I, I often give stuff away for free on Craigslist. Mm -hmm. And so mm -hmm. one time, um, <laughs> And Megan came to the, I'm like, wait, I know you. <laughs> she got something. And then the next time it was uh, Howard Kramer. It's, I'm like, guys, I kind of thinking, that's weird. These, these people have the same names as comedians I know. <laughs> <laughs> they should just call you <laughs> and say, hey, you don't happen to have an end table, do you, that you're trying to get rid of? Uh, <laughs> hey, let's take another break. Okay. And we did. So, um, yeah, uh, I want, I don't know what I want out of life, but it seems yeah. premises that are going to turn into gold. That's what I would like this week. Uh, that's, uh, if I, if I were going to ask for something for Christmas, I would like premises that turn into gold. I miss my son. I'm, I've been doing a lot of traveling and, uh, I want to hang out with my son again. Mm -hmm. Also, you know, I've been doing packets galore. Mm -hmm. and some of her shows in new york and uh right. so my i thought well if i get you know this job and i'm based in new york like monday through friday i would fly home on the weekend right like right. fly back on friday night and fly back on fly back out on sunday and um, oh wow it would be really yeah. hard and, and here's the thing because i I, I've always taken these red eye, the JetBlue red eye, like I take yeah. a red eye out from Burbank at nine o'clock, get in at 6 a.m. I feel like shit, you know, sleep all day, right. do sets Saturday night. Okay. Yeah. So the last couple of times I've flown out in the afternoon, like a one, two in the afternoon, whenever they have their afternoon flight, get right. in at nine o'clock and I still stay up till 6 a.m. I'm like, I can't just, Oof. I get it. This is bad. It doesn't feel good. I don't know. So something um, about just landing in New York causes me great anxiety <laughs> until 6 a.m. no matter what. Oof. What time is your flight tomorrow? Um, Four o'clock. Something like that. Oh, afternoon. Okay. Yeah. Mine's at noon, 1230. Uh, kind of weird, but um, oh, I Why? did get from one of the guys uh, from, from the those sort of the the next gen dudes that are all headlining this festival mm -hmm. who are, are hanging around uh, a possible name for who will be hosting the um the daily show interesting wow yeah that's and that's a good choice that's a really good choice yeah i don't I think like it's a bad that. choice yeah, it's yeah. got all kinds of potential. That's a surprise. And, I was I didn't see that coming, but mm -hmm. uh, I could see well, that working really, really well. Yeah, and oh. I, I I think um, I think they've just met with him. I don't think that it's it's anything obviously set in stone, but that was there was right, talk right. that there had been some meetings, and um, I wouldn't mind that. I mean, it'd be nice if it was yeah. Smith B, but uh, I get it sadly uh, yeah well no i think that that would be a really that would be a really fun choice to watch you know yeah really that's and a, that's and that that surprises me i didn't even think that person would be into anything like that because mm -hmm. they're it seems like they've got a different trajectory of extreme success but this would also be extreme success as well but it's a lot of work Right. There was speculation, too, about who, who would take James Corden, James Corden's spot, too. Okay. Give me a name. And they didn't, they don't have, they don't, they didn't have names for that one, but they were, um, okay. they were speculating who it could be and how, how complicated it, it would be to pick someone. And you're like, it doesn't feel that complicated because whoever takes over, it would, they would have to make it their own, right? So. Yeah. 
Um, I, I've also heard that uh, they're not committed to having another Late Late Show. Right. That was your speculation is that they might just uh, well, it's true. get rid of I it. Mean, they, yeah. The yeah, network so, kind so of said that. That's been saying that. Okay. Well, that's a drag. I don't know. Because totally. uh, he's and and he's still cranking out um, stand-up sets for people. Oh, I, mean, yeah. I think he's doing mm-hmm. at least one a week. I think. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's yeah. pretty great. Mm-hmm. And, yeah. and they're great so, sets. I mean, the the setup is perfect, and you know, you'll you will have a great set if you do it. You know, you will. He is. Uh, no, nobody. S- s- that was a really really polite way. For him to, we were. To, uh, I was talking about that. Who did? Who did it? Shane Torres did it, and he was talking mm-hmm. about how great the setup was. Um, yeah. For James Corden talking to the audience before, which led to a conversation about how, because I guess Shane's open for a lot of bands, and and Dave Ross has too, and uh, it actually helps if you, not not that I think I'm going to be opening for Metallica, like those the metal, the the metal hair band mashup. Metallica. Yeah, Beatles Metallica oh, Beatles. mashup. Oh, okay. Remember, I said next June there. There's a couple of uh, uh, bands that might want me to open for them. Me, I told you okay. like three weeks ago. But um, but there would be eighteen one nighters, and I'd probably end up doing like two fifteen minute sets in between these two bands, and um, and I asked for a certain amount of money, and they wanted uh, they wanted me to be able to help fill the room. And um, and I was like, well, wouldn't the bands anyway? And but yeah, I mean, how, there's how always do our audiences intersect at all. <laughs> but okay, <laughs> yeah, except for that, there it's a funny. It's a I mean, it's not only like if you like Beatles or or Metallica and both, you yeah. would love Metallica because true. they true, are, true. and they're funny because mu- musically they're kind of amazing, but yeah. they're also kind of silly and funny. Uh, because they're a Beatles, and the other band I think is called Tragedy, and it's a Bee Gees, yeah, <laughs> Metallica, uh, a Bee Gees metal, not not Metallica, but a hair metal mashup band, and um, and that sounds funny too. So, but what Shane and Dave Ross were both saying is that the best bands will come out, inter talk to their crowd, and say, "Thank you so much for coming out to see the show. We're gonna." Well, we're gonna get ready uh but this is my friend who's a comic she's gonna come out or they're gonna come out uh oh, please. yeah 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 and just like because otherwise they don't know why is there a comic right yeah yeah um i guess kyle canane opened up for some band and they had him start 10 minutes before they opened the doors <laughs> <laughs> so he had to just do it for the merch guy oh my god <laughs> shout out to the merch guy <laughs> it was just ridiculous and um <sighs> it sounds like a grind is what i'm saying yeah it sounds like a real grind um and well i want to yeah yeah it's money right i can't wait to go to toronto you've been to toronto recently i think with the jfl thing right yeah were you, are you working a comedy bar? No, no, I'm doing I'm doing a, a festival. <laughs> oh I know, I'm not even Jackie, kidding. Why do people think you're so festive? Well, it's it's here's the 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 festival is um. Yeah. I think it's called Far From Here, and um, it's a funny it's a funny name for festival, but I'm looking forward to it. And I've been watching on uh, on Amazon Prime, BritBox, Acorn, a Canadian show called Murdoch's Mysteries. And um, Murdoch's Mysteries is set in the late 1800s, early 1900s. And it's essentially like you would have watched it if it were 1997 between 3 and 6 p.m. on USA or TNT. Right, right, right. Like room. Kill Street Blues. Yes, yes, that's how I got to see leverage, right? I mean, there's right. there would have been no reason uh, for me to know about Bones or Castle <laughs> or NCIS or all of, I mean, I think that's how I saw Buffy and Charmed. Uh, so, 
uh, but it's called Murnox Mysteries. And so I kind of want to go to Toronto and go to all these, <laughs> even though nothing's there from 19, from 1895. Nothing's there from 1910. It's going to be in the middle of December. There'll be a, a million be pounds freezing. of snow. Yeah. Hey, are you, okay. are you snowed in? Yeah, no, not at all. Oh, but I went to Salem. Did I tell you that? Oh, right. You were looking at up the ancestors, right? Yes. It, well, uh, no, not my ancestors. <laughs> I'm just my, the, my witch ancestors. No, but I just very quickly, because uh, Kyle is no, already slow so down. Free. Slow down. No, no. Um, because <laughs> um, we're at uh, like 55. So he keeps we're... setting us free slightly three minutes early. And so this is going to oh, be a no, 45 minute. On. <laughs> it's going to be a 45 minute podcast. <laughs> okay. So I'm in the, the witch museum and it's, it's, you know, this was whatever their setup was. It's like tableaus and it's like giant dioramas with life size, you know, um, pilgrims and, um, you know, Ann Putnam oh. and, and witches and stuff like that. What? And they go, they go from one to the other and they light it. It's really, it, you know, it was probably really cool in, 68 right <laughs> but the, I, I swear the narration is so old and they they talk about oh, I forget the name of this girl okay so her name begins with a t and she was um she's the one she was she was black and mm -hmm. she was they said he, she was a servant of of, of the uh, pastor I'm like servant hmm in hmm. massachusetts I'm not sure a servant when and slavery but uh, well yeah but then they go, Mass they go I don't yes know. and she 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 entertained the girls the white girls the white girls that started calling everyone witches she entertained them with stories of you know witchcraft from africa and she came from africa she came over they, this is how they say it she came over on a slave ship like, oh, did she just oh, see a slave ship she, oh. leaving and go, hey, you guys got room for one more? I just Oh, my over. God. That reminds me of, <laughs> of the Romero, um, the, oh woman, the, the woman who made the Middle Passage. She made a Middle Passage game. Andy, Andy showed me this video. Okay, so, oh, God dang it. Her last name's Romero. And okay. her daughter came home from school, and she was like seven or eight years old. And she said to her daughter... Uh, she's a game designer, famous game designer. I can't remember her first name, but uh, the she goes, "What'd you learn at school today?" And her daughter goes, "Well, we learned about the Middle Passage." And she stopped moving. She has a TED talk about it, and she stopped moving and she said, "Oh, oh what did you learn about the Middle Passage? Uh, what's the Middle Passage?" And her daughter goes, "Oh, it's how the um, it's how black people ended up coming to America, coming to America." Oh my god! And she was like, "What?" And she, because the Middle Passage, of course, is part of the the three points of uh, rum to slavery to wood, to, you know, with England yeah. and North Carolina and and Boston and um, and Brazil is, uh, or I'm thinking of a triangle. Okay, but anyway, go ahead. Whatever, Sorry. but the but whatever it is, it's uh. So she ended up making a essentially her husband came home and her daughter was just crying because uh because she had made a game they had meeples they had like little 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 prototype crap around the house and uh, -huh. uh she she was like okay well let's do let, here we'll clean off the dining room table here's africa here's well, let's put these families together it's be very beautiful here's a piece of paper this will be the ship. The ship comes up and then we're going to take the mom from this family and we're going to take the dad and the little kid from this family. And her daughter goes, mommy, you forgot the dad from that family. And she goes, yeah. Anyway, so we're going to take all these people. We're going to put them on the ship. About the middle of the journey, we run out of food. We're going to have to throw some people off. And uh, so wow. it is It is literally, the TED Talk is amazing. I should find that the uh, the clip on that. Oh, yeah. It's, yeah. And she also made, I think she did a, a Holocaust train. Like she ended wow. up doing several educational um, games, games, games to teach. Oh, uh, that's, uh, that's cool. Of how, how these things were, were, were actually, what actually happened. And so you're saying at the Salem uh, Museum, they described it as coming to America. She came over on, uh, on a slave ship. 
Yeah. She bought a she, ticket. She hitched a ride. Mm. She said the same. And then she became a servant. Yeah. Then she decided. And she became a servant. Uh, and then they also had, I guess, Anne Putnam recanted later, or not didn't recant. Well, she basically said, "Yeah, we were just we were doing it for fun. We were just messing and, around." <laughs> but they had her what she said read by a man. And it, it was just really strange to have this entire narration done kind of like in this old male, Eng kind of like old American English accent. Yeah. Um, it just, I was like, um, yeah, you guys should probably, you know, just update Revamp. this a little bit. Have, have you, did you get to read, did you ever, I listened to it on Audible, but it's uh, Sarah Vowell's The Wordy Shipmates, The Wordy Shipmates. No, uh -uh. It is mm -hmm. amazing. But it's oh. also super dense, and that's why I listen okay. to it on Audible. I think that's a good thing to listen to. I did buy the House of Seven Gables, and I visited, um, I visited the House of Seven Gables and Nathaniel Hawthorne's birthplace, which is down the street, which is pretty cool. I got to see the plan to um, to to build uh, Artemis. Uh, it's either a, a moon station or a moon orbiting a station to orbit the moon uh, as our first step to going to Mars, which uh, may or may not be a waste of money, but it's still pretty cool. Hopefully, waste of money, but I'm glad you saw it. Okay, bye.